Well, I think that there are probably three major points. Uh, the first point is uh, how can we identify and if possible at the earliest stages as possible those cases that have MBL, even MBL low, but they have a high risk of progression. So at present, this is becoming uh, easier and easier in uh, MBL high count, but uh, still at the moment, we don't have variables that would help predicting progression in MBL low to MBL high and CLL. For sure, age plays a role in terms that if you detect an MBL, particularly an MBL low count at a very advanced age, the time it will most probably take to develop CLL is longer than the life expectancy of uh, that particular individual. But it might get a uh, high relevance in uh, younger adults with uh, even very small CLL clones or CLL-like MBL clones. So that's the first point. The second point is why do we get these clones appearing so frequently? So what is the reason to develop in parallel with aging these uh, MBL clones now at the stage of uh, low count MBL? And uh, even if there is the general belief that uh, B-cell B receptor stimulation is probably on the origin, there is no solid data really placing or identifying the list of causes and cofactors for developing MBL in adults. And the third the relevant part is what is the consequences of having for decades in your life small clones of B cells in the normal residual B cells and more generally in your immune system and how this affects the known risk increased for infection and even severe infections. There, there is uh, some preliminary data indicating that particularly the B cell responses and structure are affected, but uh, understanding uh, why they are affected and what are the mechanisms involved remains a challenge.